Gambia's Truth Commission resumes its public hearings after a long break due to COVID-19. ECOWAS chairman visits Mali a few weeks after the regional block leave sanctions. Gambia National Assembly member granted bail after preliminary court hearing. These and more coming your way on the wall today. Hello, this is Africa TV and many thanks for joining us. I am Amadou Kante and now the news in detail. Now, the Truth Reconciliation and Reparation Commission resumes its public hearings on Monday after a two-month shutdown due to the coronavirus pandemic. The commission, which is looking into human rights violations under the former regime, is continuing its testimonies of victims of the former President Yaya Jammeh's alternative HIV and AIDS and other elements treatment programs. The CC has more in this report. With a two-year mandate largely stalled by COVID-19, the Truth Commission is established to probe into crimes allegedly committed by the Jambe regime from July 1994 to January 2017. It is to provide a historical account of human rights violations under the Jambe regime. At the commencement of the 16th session on Monday, the chairman of the commission, Lamin J. Sisa, said the hearings will focus on the continuation of testimonies on Jambes, HIV and AIDS and other treatment programs. The 16th session will open with a continuation of our hearings on the former president's alternative HIV, AIDS and the other diseases treatment program during which I'm uh, Several people suffered human rights violations and abuses. Ex-President Jambe's reign is characterized by allegations of massive rights abuses that included killings, disappearances, torture, rape, arbitrary arrest, imprisonment of political opponents and journalists, a fake HIV and AIDS treatment program, and a government sanction which hunting exercise. From then, it began its public hearings in January 2019. The Truth Commission has heard testimonies from several witnesses, including victims of human rights violations and self-confessed murderers. The Commission had heard testimonies from 261 witnesses. Of these witnesses, 195 were male and the 66 were female. Out of the total number of witnesses appearing before the Commission so far, 166 victims, um, uh, 166 were victims, and the 46 were self-confessed perpetrators and adversely mentioned persons. 25 witnesses testified via video link from uh, the Gambian diaspora. In January 2007, the then Gambian President Yahya Jambe announced that he had received a mandate from God to create an HIV and AIDS herbal cure, a program in which victims said their rights were abused. The former dictator now lives in exile in Equatorial Guinea since his outsting in 2017. Reporting for iAfrican News, I am Day Sisi. Tiara said as the Truth Reconstruction and Reparation Commission resumes its operation after a long break due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, the Africa Center for Disease Control and Prevention has received 900,000 COVID-19 test kits from the European Union. The medical items are meant to support the continent's fight against the coronavirus pandemic. Since the emergence of the pandemic, African countries have benefited from several support initiatives from international partners to boost the continent's battle against the virus. Here are more details of that in this report. This is 7.5 tons of medical supplies delivered at Addis Ababa Bole International Airport. The donation is aimed at helping Africa 
battle the COVID-19 pandemic. The European Union's foreign policy chief, Joseph Borrell, said the donation demonstrates the European Union's solidarity with the African Union. This is an important expression of the European Union role in the fight against pandemic and how we do that with our partners from the African Union, which leads the continental response to the pandemics. The 900,000 COVID-19 testing kits gifted to the Africa CDC helps to boost the continent's coronavirus testing capacity. Even though, as Africa, we have made some progress in the testing of COVID-19, we still lag behind in the scaling up of the testing due to various constraints. The major one being the shortage of test kits and medical supplies. And that is why your intervention today is so deeply appreciated. African countries are also combating with the economic challenge caused by the pandemic. The African Union has called on member states to strengthen partnerships. We should increase our social, political, medical, economic solidarity. Because after this disease, there will be socio-economic consequences. As you know, business has gone down, traveling has gone down, airlines are in trouble, economies are in trouble. So we have to pull together as a continent to overcome this challenge. Currently, and across its 54 states, Africa has over 1.5 million confirmed COVID-19 cases, nearly 1.3 million recoveries and about 38,000 deaths. These numbers are relatively low compared to other regions in the world. Still, many agree African nations must keep combating the coronavirus top of their priority list. The European Union there support and, or supports Africa in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, from that report in Ethiopia, we come back home because the uh, nominated National Assembly member, Yakumbo Chaite, who is charged with assault and obstruction of a law enforcement officer, has been granted bail by the Carnifee Magistrates Court. The bail for Honorable Chaite during Monday's preliminary hearing is set, to, it's set in the sum of $50,000 with two Gambian sorties. The court case has now been adjourned until October 26, when the hearing is expected to begin. Several United Democratic Party members, including the Deputy Party Leader, were in court to show solidarity with the National Assembly member. From that next to uh, Mali, where Ghana's President Nana Akufo Addo visited the country on Sunday after the sub regional bloc ECOWAS lifted its economic san sanctions against or following the August coup. Where President Addo, who is also the chairman of the bloc, was welcomed by Mali's interim president, Bandao. Sona Tunkra tells us more of that in this report. The Ghanaian leader is expected to meet with the interim vice president, Asimi Gweta, who led the overthrow of former president Keta. ECOWAS slammed Mali with economic sanctions by closing its borders and imposed trade restrictions after the undemocratic outstanding of Keta two months ago. However, the 15-nation grouping ended its sanctions after Mali met its demand of returning the country to a civilian ruler. The transitional government plans to hold elections after 18 months. The bloc had praised Mali's new interim government after lifting its sanctions to release all military and civilian officials arrested during the coup. As part of the demands by ECOWAS, Mali's former Prime Minister Buba Sisi and other officials and military personnel detained during the August coup have been released. These senior figures had been held since the removal of President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, which alarmed Mali's foreign partners who feared it would further destabilize Mali and undermine a joint campaign against fighters in the wider Sahel region. Months of political unrest in Mali was sparked by former President Keita's failure to stem insurgency activities in the north and intercommunal violence in the northern and central part of Mali after seven years in power. 
for Air Africa TV, Sohna Tunkara. The chairperson of ECOWAS and Ghanaian President Nana Akufo are there visiting Mali for the first time since the coup and of course eventually the regional bloc also lifting its sanction on the West African nation. With that, we will now take a short break and when we come back, there's more news coming ahead. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back and you are watching the World Today News Bulletin on Africa TV and now to the rest of the stories and to the latest update of the COVID-19 in the country because the Gambia has not recorded any new COVID-19 deaths on Monday. The total number of deaths still remains at 117 with 157 new laboratory tests, only four new cases were recorded taking the total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases to 3,632. Three COVID-19 cases have recovered and got discharged from treatment centers, according to the Minister of Health. The country currently has 12 people in quarantine, 972 active cases, and a crude case fatality ratio of 3.2%. And that is the latest update of the COVID-19 situation in the Gambia, next to Nigeria, where a massive gas explosion in the country, of course, city of Lagos, led to the heavy destruction of buildings. Businesses in the area have also been burnt down. The deputy governor of the Lagos state visited the gas facilities to have first-hand information about the incident. As investigation into the causes of the explosion continue, Residents in the area have called an immediate relocation of the gas plant. Let's have more details of that in this report. Following the gas explosion, and here at the community to see things for himself, is the Deputy Governor of Lagos State. So there are protocols when these things are to be set. So as a government, we have to make sure that those protocols are followed. And in cases where the protocols are not followed, people are prosecuted to the full extent of the law to serve as example so that it's okay to have a business but you cannot do that at the risk of people's life. Well right behind me is the truck that was discharging gas in the facility when the explosion happened. So the truck wasn't actually here, it was inside the facility over there but it was the force of the explosion that blew the truck to this port. That gives you a clear sense of how powerful the explosion was at the time. We recovered five bodies. 25 buildings were affected. Out of the 25 buildings that were affected, 10 were severely affected. Three vehicles are involved. 16 shops were involved. That's quite massive. It is massive. Among the buildings that were severely affected by the gas explosion is this private school, which had only just reopened after COVID-19 restrictions were lifted. The situation here could have been fatal if the school had been in session at the time of the explosion. The old roof of this building is affected. You can see from the front edge, you can see this office, this small office that you're seeing. What God bonds here is over a million naira. The, all the pupils' test books, all their exercise books, their school uniform, even some that at the moment that you can't even think about. Authorities have sealed the school until investigations into the incident are concluded. The explosion is a second in the city within a space of two months. The fatality rate from this incident could have been much worse if this had happened much later in the day, especially around this period when this whole area is usually very busy. For now, 
The authorities have shut down the gas plant. They say they want to investigate the exact cause of the incident. But then the residents of this area are insistent that they do not want the gas facility here any longer. Gas explosion there in one of Nigeria's major city, Lagos. And from that report in Nigeria, next to South Africa, because the South African government has taken a landmark decision in the country's land reform process by allocating about 700,000 hectares of land to black farmers. The move, according to the government, is meant to boost the participation of farmers in uplifting the country's economy. The Rainbow Nation's land reform program has been impeded by controversies, but this latest step is expected to change the narratives. Here are more details of that in this report. It's been hailed as a major milestone in the agrarian reform process, which according to the government will greatly assist the participation of black emerging farmers in South Africa's economy. Their decision to allocate around 700,000 hectares of state-owned land will allow beneficiaries to sublease or sublet a portion of the land for agricultural use. Industry stakeholders have broadly welcomed the government's decision. We welcome this decision. Um, and and uh, uh, if, 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 if that land can be turned and maintained in pro productive units, uh, commercial units, uh, for sustainability of the production of, of food, uh, for sure, that's a, that's a great, great uh, positive for us and, and a step in the right direction. Around 896 farms comprising the 700,000 hectares would be released for sustainable use in farmland for growing crops or animal husbandry. Two-thirds of the land is located in the northwest and the Limpopo region, but emerging farmers will need to access operational capital to get the ball rolling. Uh, they're talking about leases, 30-year leases and so forth uh, uh, regarding this land. Uh, I'm a great supporter of title deed um, uh, so that that can serve as collateral to the banking uh, fraternity and, and that they can then access uh, uh, finance and capital in that matter. So far, around 19% has already been allocated to 275 farmers. And while there is an emphasis on farming the lands productively, the large tracts being allocated will play an important role in speeding up agricultural land reform. It is a major milestone, especially when comparing the number of redistributed lands per annum. The redistribution of land has generally been slow and only about 100,000 of hectares of land have been released annually. Uh, this is a major step by government as it will enable um, access to more farmers who are in need of land at the present moment. The allocation of the land may be seen as a game changer, but it does remain some concerns about the mechanisms that will be used to identify successful applicants. Ensuring a transparent and democratic process will assist the government greatly to strike a balance between agrarian land reform and redress. From the report, in from South Africa on the country's land reform process. We finally and eventually bring this news bulletin to an end. But for more details on this and other stories, as always, you can log on to our website on iafrica.tv. But you can also join Ibrahim John at 19.30 GMT or 7.30 local time for the Gambia 24 news bulletin. But for now, many thanks for the pleasure of your company. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.